Hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I want to answer the question, can we actually stack components using order layout? And what I mean is stacking like this. So there's a negative spacing between our elements. So let me just make an order layout first. So we can go right click, add order layout, which is shift A as the shortcut. And as you can see in our properties panel, we have spacing between items as zero. So essentially we need to make it a negative number. So to change this, I can just click on the icon. So just click and dragging. I'm moving my mouse to the right. You can see there's it's a positive number. But when I move to the left, it stops at zero. So is there a possible way we can make it a negative number? The answer is no, you can't make it a negative number, but there's a little hack that we can do to make it overlap. Another way you can do it is just by keeping it um, using a group with the tidy up feature activated. So we can see the tidy up feature is activated. If you don't know what that is, go check out my video on the tidy up tool. But essentially when we have it in the tidy up feature, we can just go minus 10 and we can just control it like that. And then we can just group the components so they stay together. So like that. But for whatever reason, if you do want the auto layout feature on, and the, the reason why you might want to do that is so you can quickly add elements into your auto layout. As an example, let me just take this one out. What you want to do is actually shrink the frame. So we know that there's a trick with frames in that you can actually reduce the size without cropping the image. And all we have to do is make sure the clip content is off. So as we make it smaller, what is actually happening is in this order layout, it's actually reading the edge of the frame is where it's placing the next frame element. As you can see here, which is why by reducing the frame, we can actually stack out elements. So this is sort of a little hack. And the benefit of doing this is if you have another one, you can just click and drag and add it to the list. And if you ever wanted to just revert it back, you can just go on your initial frame. So this is my master component and I can use this button resize to fit. So it just pushes back my frame outline to the extents of the image. Hopefully that was pretty straightforward. For those who are interested, I'm now going to show you how we can actually set up our file so that we have one master component, which will enable us to control all of these additional bubbles. For this exercise, I just want to shout out Pablo Stanley. I've been using his Open Peeps illustrations. And if you want to check it out, it's a free resource. Very cool. Um, just check out openpeeps.com. I'll also link the resource down below. So now jumping into the exercise, I have four illustrations that I've just taken from his templates. And I've just recolored them to create these four awesome looking people. And I've just made them all into main components. And you know it's a main component because you can see it has the solid four diamonds. So I'm just going to pick the first person. Um, I'm just going to copy using the option key, click dragging. So my first person. And now I need to make this bubble. So I'm just going to use the ellipse tool, which will just be in your shape tools over here. And the shortcut is O. So I'm just going to make a sized circle. I'm trying to make it a perfect circle. And you can do that by just holding shift 150 by 150. And now I just want to overlay it on his face as this is the size that I want. So it's really hard to see it. Um, and the easiest way to do that is just to hide the fill. But a quicker way to do that is by using the shortcut shift X. And what that does is it actually swaps the fill and the stroke around. So previously, let me just go back. There was no stroke and the fill was gray. Going shift X, I just swap them around really quickly, which is really handy. So now I can just line up the face, which is perfect. And what we want to do is actually crop out the rest of the image. So the way that we do that is using the use as mask tool. And the way that this works is it uses the layer on the very bottom as the mask. So we actually want the circle to be the mask, not the image. So we want to move it to the back. And the way that we can do that is go right click send to back, which is also the left square bracket. And we can just select it again and go use as mask. 
So what's actually happening is it only takes whatever is filled in to create what is remainder. So we, we don't want to do this. So essentially what it's doing is it's only taking that stroke amount. So we just go undo. What we want to do is go back and select that circle. So because it's at the bottom, it's hard to select it. Um, you can hold down the command key to do a deep select. And a deep select just means it enables you to just pick exactly what you want or whatever your mouse is hovering over. So I have my circle and let's just bring it back to the fill. So shift X again. So now this should work. So I'm just going to go use this mask. And there we have it. We have the perfect circle here. Um, what do we want to do now? We want to bring that fill in because it's quite hard to see that circle outline. So we want to just go back to our images here. Let me just select all of these components and I just want to add a fill. So just in my properties panel using the plus icon, just add a white fill. So that's perfect here. And you can see it's currently a mask group. So we actually don't want it to be a group. We want it to be a frame to do that trick. So what we can do is we can go right click frame selection. And then if I open it in the properties panel, you see my frame with the group inside it. And I feel like that's too many layers. So I'm just going to go undo. The better way to do it is actually to just change your group into a frame. And the way that we can do that is in the properties panel, we just see group and we just change it to a frame. So there we have our frame. Um, and let's just make this into a, a component because I like this bubble shape. And then we can just replicate the other four. So we can go right click, create component. And the shortcut is option command K. And now let's make some copies. So we've got one. So, so to do that quick copy again, it's just holding down the option key, click drag. And then you can just duplicate that command by going Command D. So it's really good for pasting things really quickly. And now essentially I want to change them into the other three people. So what I can go do is on the second one, I can double click, select that person. And here I can go my swap instance. So I'm just clicking swap instance. But as you can see, they're awkward person. We have a mask group and a frame one. It's kind of hard to see which one we want to change it to. So good practice is actually to go back to here and let's start to rename these. So we can go, let's call this hat. And this person can be the coat. And then this looks like a bear. And this lady is holding a knife for whatever reason. So let's go back here. And you can see, we can see those changes now, but we also see other components, which is kind of annoying, right? So I've made a component here and I had one before. So I don't want to always see all of these when I'm changing my component. Otherwise I need to know what these are. So we essentially need to make these into a group. And there are two ways to do that. The first one is just to put it all into a frame which is sort of like putting it into a folder. So we can just do this. And we can just call these people. So that's the first way. And as you can see, now they're in the people group. So if I go back, these are the other two I saw before. Then the people group. Or if for your information, let me just go undo. So I'm just going command Z. Another way that Figma reads groups is by renaming these. I'm just going to select them all. I'm going to go Command R for quick rename or bulk rename. And essentially what we want to write is a word with a forward slash. So we can just go people forward slash. And then I want to keep all their current names. So I just can click this current name button, rename. So this is another way to do it. Um, I think the first way was a bit better because you, you don't need to write these complex naming things. Um, but if I go back here, you can see it's still in that people group, same thing. So let me just go ahead and change it. Uh, let's go coat, bear, knife. Okay, let's do that. 
bear and knife. Right, okay, now you can see this one is kind of cropped, which is not what I like. So we can just go back to here and let's just make it a bit bigger. So we can, so we gotta make sure we know what we're changing. So we're currently changing the frame, which is okay. We can fix that later. So we have the ellipse at the bottom, which is the crop group. Um, and we wanna make that crop a bit bigger. Let's say, like we can also control it here. Let's make it 180. And then moving that person about there. That's a bit better. And then selecting our mask group component, which was our frame. As you can see here, we can just hit this button, resize to fit. And now you can see it's perfect fit again. And let's say we want to create an outline around or like a stroke around our bubble just to give it more oomph. So you might be thinking you can just select the, the component and go add stroke, but no, it actually makes the square, which is not what we want. Or you might be thinking we can go to the crop ellipse and add a stroke here on the inside. Let's go five but it actually does nothing. So what we actually need to do is because we want that stroke to be the same size as the crop, we can just actually just duplicate this layer. It's not a duplicate button. Okay, I'm gonna have to do a copy paste. So Command C, Command V. So now you can see there are two crop layers and we actually wanna turn the crop feature off for of one of them because essentially we wanna make it back into a shape and this is kind of weird, but actually you have to click on this button, use as must to turn it back. I don't know why that is. It just is. So it's now a regular circle or ellipse. We can move it to the top because we want it above our image. And yet again, we want to swap the fill into a stroke. So we just go shift X. And then let's make it a bit thinner. It's kind of thick. Let's go black and we can go one so make sure it's on inside because when it's outside the crop will just get rid of it because that's the extents of our crop so we make sure it's in inside let's make it two i think that's a bit better and there we have it that's our four bubbles made and we can test it again so i can go add water layout or shortcut shift a and with this mask group, if I control the crop, you can see how it's overlapping, but now it's cutting into my shape. So just gonna make sure the clip content is off. And there we have it. Hopefully you've learned some neat tricks today. That's all for now. Hope you all stay hydrated, take a break, rest your eyes, and I'll see you all next time.